Some things haven't changed at the Gabla Zalita Bank in rural Bavaria. Just like in olden times, today's accounts have to be balanced. Without balance, everything's worthless, says senior manager Jörg Gabla. He keeps the bank's illustrious history safely locked away. It issued its first loan agreement 185 years ago. The first loan went to a farmer. It was still very straightforward. Half a page. Issued in 1828. And in 1828, the money came back. The money came back again and again, just a bit more than went out. And it was invested in only the barest essentials. At that time, it was all about vital necessities, and if someone didn't have the money for them, they came to the bank. But nowadays, they come and ask for money to buy a house in Croatia. If all the banks in the world were like the Gabla Zalita Bank, there might never have been a financial crisis. It's easy to hear how money has lost weight over the years. The Silverling gives a resounding ring. But the Reichsmark sounds thinner. The first Deutsche Mark, the last Deutsche Mark are even thinner. And the Euro hardly rings at all. Money is only as valuable as the people's faith in it. Following that old truism helped this bank weather the worst of the crisis. Another principle these bankers stick to is never deal in securities they don't understand. And they stand behind the risks they take with their own money. I put up my entire fortune, my father put up his entire fortune, and my colleague Herr Bräunig puts up his entire fortune. In today's banks, personal guarantees are all but unthinkable. And the managers are generally employees, not private owners. They play with other people's money. Gabla says only the state can rein in their taste for risky deals. And yet the new regulations have hit the smallest banks the hardest. Relative to our size, we have to invest too much manpower, time and effort into complying with all the bureaucratic requirements. The bankers at Gabla Zalita can't continue their antiquated method of business correspondence. They have the impression that one reason the regulations are raining down is because they no longer have to be tediously written by hand. The European Union's sweeping legislation makes no distinction between big banks and small private ones. How many chickens have you got? Fifteen? And how many eggs do they lay? Ten or twelve? A daily dozen? At quitting time, the bankers trade their business suits for overalls. They came from farming backgrounds, and farmers are their best customers. But even farmers are dealing with more and more red tape. The gablas make it their business to know the farmer's business. We want to keep agriculture up and running, because our bank's family tradition and its origins are rooted in agriculture and are inseparably bound to it. Bankers in rubber boots. Regulators should try it. Before they lend other people's money, they ought to know the hard work it took to earn it.